just I'm in the best mood. I'm so excited to film. I'm so excited to talk to you guys because we're entering our fussy era. What is that? What are you talking about? What's a fussy era? What do you mean, Yvonne? What's this word fussy? Okay, I got you. I got you. I got you. The Google definition of fussy. A person that is fastidious about one's needs or requirements. Hard to please. I feel like personally that is a little negative and that's not what I mean. Fussy is being particular. It's knowing what you want, asking for it, somewhat persistently, not to be confused with bitchiness. We're gonna do my hair today, by the way. If you haven't noticed, I put in my inches, but we need to blend them because this is just like absolutely not a look. And that's part of this whole fussy thing is like sometimes I don't take my time enough with my look. We'll get into why. But I do wanna thank the sponsor of this video, New Me. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it. Today I will be using their 32 millimeter blush pink classic curling wand. She's gorgeous. She's heating up for me right now. I'm so, so, so excited to curl my hair. It's been a minute since I've had like proper curls and I really just want to look, I want to look done up. And what I really, really like about this curler is that the curls last. That is so important to me. I'm not going to keep recurling my hair. You will not get me to recurl my hair constantly. A touch up here and there, absolutely, like one or two pieces, but to recurl my whole head of hair, it's screaming heat damage, it's giving fried, I'm not gonna do it. I need a bigger curl to get the look that I'm going for, so that is why I went with a 32 millimeter. Just take a look at the before and then the after. I do have a code, the code is Ivana, just my name. It'll get 10% off your entire new meat purchase. I have a link down below for you guys and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of this video. The funny thing is about this, fussy was actually one of the words I remember I told my friend Warren, that that is one of my words for the year is being fussier. Wait, let me tell you why I'm personally entering my fussy era. I'm tired. If that deep sigh wasn't enough to let you know, I'm, I'm tired, a girl is tired. Like I'm tired of not getting exactly what I want when I know I am not only deserving, but I'm so capable of having it. I want the most, not the lesser, like cue the song. And I deserve it, and so do you. So do you. Basically, I've realized that there have been too many times where I have disrespected myself. I feel like there's too many times I've wasted money, too many times that I know that I'm getting the short end of the stick and I've been a little too comfortable with it. I don't like that for me. But if you know you're getting the short end of the stick, stop taking the stick. What triggered it really is like people ex expect a little bit of fussiness from me. I know that I, you know, I carry myself a certain way. I look a certain way. People just ha like have stereotypes of you. Like I think most women are pretty aware of the stereotypes that are attached to themselves. I think people think that I am super high maintenance and all, you know, all these things because I love beauty and I love fashion and I, I just love like looking good, feeling good, going out, new stuff, cute things. Like I, I you know, I just love it, but that's who I am. I have overcompensated at times, a lot of times. First of all, it's the Aquarius in me. We're contrarian. So when people think a certain thing about me, even if it is true, I will try and dispel it. And now it's become a part of my personality where I'm like, this isn't even serving you. And I want to get closer to the Dolly Parton effect. If you're not aware of what the Dolly Parton effect is, it is basically the trifecta of your personality um, matching. So Dolly Parton is, she's perfect. Um, who she is, who, what she looks like she is, and who she thinks she is are all the same thing. I am not a simple girl. I do not look like a simple girl because I've wanted to overcompensate in my life for people thinking that maybe I am materialistic when really I'm more just, I enjoy quality. That I'm ready to give people what they want. You think I'm this glamorous girl. You think I'm all these things like, okay. Inauthentically trying to be something like less complicated or easy to please. I'm trying to embrace this part of my personality that I feel like I have been suppressing because of the way that people perceive me. Over time, this has left me basically lowering my expectations for myself. And energetically, I think that's awful. I think it's an awful thing to do. I actually have higher expectations of myself. Um, I also think it's even lowered the expectations I have of how I will even treat others. You know? Oh, don't too much of it. Oh, don't do too much. And it's like, mm, no, I want to do more for others. I want to do more for myself. 
So that is why I'm entering my fussy era. If you related to any of that, maybe you should too, because what are we doing? We're playing ourselves. How we're gonna enter this era, I felt like I needed a place to start. I feel like knowing what you want and being able to articulate it is so important in this life, like in so many different aspects, especially with my job, with social media, all the things. But understanding your taste and why you like what you like is everything. And I love doing this on Pinterest is like, finding out what I like, grouping it all together, find the similarities, but also know the names of things. Like people, especially with like interior design things, it's like, oh, what are those lights that hang on the wall? It's a sconce, it's like a pendant, you know, things like that. Really take this and expand it to whatever you want in your life. But knowing the names of things that you like, like being able to describe what you like and articulating yourself and expanding your vocabulary so that you can describe the things that you want. So like if I go to a nail salon, especially a new salon where I don't know if they're gonna know me very well or what I like and all the things, I'm going to bring what? A photo reference of what I want. I'm going to know the name and shape. Apply that in as many ways as you can in your life as far as getting what you want out of something. If you, Especially if you're spending your time or money, get what you want. Another thing that's gonna be so important to this journey is leaving behind anything that doesn't serve you anymore, anything that signals that you are a settler, which I have to admit, I have been a settler. Uh, me and my friends up and left a restaurant, not up and left because they didn't even serve us from the hostess stand, but like, we're not spending our money here. And this actually isn't the first time this has happened. I actually had a friend where they sat us in the back of a restaurant and it was like not busy at all. It was so, so, so empty. And like, we were just like near the trash cans and it was just not the great place to sit. And it wasn't like, oh, we're gonna go explain ourselves. We just left, got up and left. Which of course, like, you know, I don't know. Mm. If there weren't other restaurants around, definitely we probably would have just been like, hey, can we sit somewhere else? But like, we obviously weren't that keen on like going here in the first place. We were just like, okay, I'm like, ew, and we're gonna sit here and eat this? Leave dates. The second you know that that person's giving you the egg, the second you know, leave. Leave that date. Don't stay on that date. Leave. Go. Get out. Be like, okay, I'm sorry. I don't think this is gonna work out. I don't really see a future for us. I don't want to waste your time. I'm gonna go home. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I also think it's really important to leave stagnant friendships where they're at. I don't think that that is the worst thing in the world. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it where it's at. It doesn't have to be this big deal. Like, this isn't going anywhere. We've communicated about it. Like, it's just more so like, okay, let it go. Leave it where it's at. We're done here. It's cool. Leaving jobs that don't value you. If you know on paper you are not being paid what you should be paid for the work that you're putting in, you better leave. Also, leaving conversations where you aren't being heard, I highly recommend this with parents. I highly recommend this with authority figures. I highly recommend this in group situations. I, I just leave. Especially, and I, I really want to drive this one home for my women of color and black women especially. <sighs> if you're being overlooked in a conversation, don't argue. Do not argue with these people. Do not give them the satisfaction. Leave. Leave. Get up and leave. Oh, I'm not being heard. Oh, you're talking over me. Oh, you're, you're, you want to just say my idea a little bit. Like, I'm leaving. And I know a lot of this is easier, seems easier said than done, but even if you can't physically exit, you can mentally exit. You can stop contributing. You can stop contributing and you can also stop listening. People know when you stop listening. Let your eyes glaze over. Let it make, make it very exceptionally clear that you are no longer participating in this conversation because you're done. Oh, well, that's, you know, that's rude. Be rude. Be a little rude. So I'm like, no, because people need to understand that you're not someone to play with. Those are the things that I'm starting with. If it doesn't serve me, if it's giving settling, I'm leaving. I'm out. We got to practice this fussiness. We have to put it to the test. We have to make ourselves a little uncomfortable. We can do it. I know that we can do it. And it's going to start with asking for what you want and asking for what you want with detail. You cannot expect people to read your mind. That is one thing. It's like, oh, no, no, no. And no one knows what you want. And it's very selfish to think that people can read your mind and know all of your wants, needs, desires. You need to ask, you need to speak up for yourself. And it also is a signal to yourself and your inner psyche that I can trust myself to advocate for myself. Self-trust and self-worth, it doesn't just come from like, oh, I have it. No, 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 no. It's constantly showing up for yourself, even if a huge part of you is uncomfortable with it, a huge part of you is nervous, a huge part of you is shy, but it's like, hey, I can't, I can't 
let myself, my inner child, whatever needs me at this moment to, to get this done, be swayed. I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna get what I want. One of my favorite quotes in the world is by, by Meryl Streep, my girl Meryl. It is so good and it's so underused. It is amazing what you can get if you quietly, clearly, and authoritatively demand it. I love that. That is so classy. That is exactly what we are on. And if you need to practice beforehand, girl, don't feel weird for having to practice a conversation. Sometimes I don't love, frankly, there are times where I can tell that someone has practiced a conversation before talking to me or they've gone over this in their head. I'm like, wow, this sounds really contrived. Um, but you know what? More power to you for, for, for saying it. Practice all you need to. Practice in the car. If it's before the nail salon, I got it. Hey, I want it like this. Or hey, I didn't like my service. Whatever you need to do in the bathroom beforehand, just do it and don't feel silly about it because you're standing up for yourself. At the end of the day, you'll always be a thousand times happier that you did it. And really, when you come, when it comes to like asking for what you want, expect to ex get exactly what you want. Raise your expectations. I'm raising my expectations. I'm be honest. Like there was a time, especially on social media, where I think it's like have no expectations of others. We don't we don't expect anything. Please, that's tired. That's played out. That hasn't gotten me anywhere. I think it's really important to have non-negotiables when it comes to yourself. You need to have a standard, and I'm gonna just be very transparent about what mine are and I don't feel bad about any of these. <laughs> I'm not wearing clothes that don't fit. And I think that is so important to like your vessel, whether you are small like me, if you're on the bigger side, if you just have like, you know, my shoulders are built funny. So like, you know, they ha you're particular about things, be particular. If it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. And, it, and if, if a brand doesn't make what your size, F them. You know what I mean? Like F them. Don't, don't try and fit into stuff that it doesn't fit you. I don't, I don't like that. We have to honor the vessels that we're in by feeling comfortable. It, it has so much to do with our own comfort. I don't like stuff sliding off my shoulders. I don't like, I don't like stuff that just look crazy on me. No, it needs to fit. My clothes, I deserve to have clothes that fit. My vessel deserves to be comfortable. Kind of like a weird thing that has definitely come up um, with clothing collabs and partnerships and things like that. Like I don't really wear bright colors. It is, it's not my thing. I will say no to things I just don't like. And sometimes that has like hindered partnerships or whatever, and it can come off really fussy, bitchy, whatever. But it's like, the reason that you like me and are coming to me is because I have discernment. That's just the truth. You aren't coming to me because I wear just anything. And that's on period poo. I, I have a certain look, I have a certain vibe, and it's not just because like, oh, I have to stick to an aesthetic, or it's not that strict, it's not this like crazy thing. It's like, this is what I like, this is who I am. This is what you're gonna see me in at the grocery store. Like, it's just what it is. Like, this is how I carry myself. And it's definitely been that thing of like, you know, it's like awkward to tell people like, hey, I don't like wear color like that. Like, like this collection is so cute and I'm so proud of y'all, but like, I'm not gonna personally, it just doesn't resonate with me and it feels inauthentic. Whatever your non-negotiables are, stick with them and stand in them and, and be happy that you have them because some people have no discernment. Like, oh, I don't have a vibe. I don't have a, I don't have a, a distinct anything or I don't feel like I have a sense of self and style. It's because you didn't, you have no boundaries. I think another easy one and everyone should have this one on their list is I will not be spoken to unfairly. And I say unfairly because I can get out of pocket. I know myself like, oh my God, like I can say some wild things. Like if I am going back and forth with you and like I know that I'm on some BS, like you're not speaking to me unfairly. Like if I'm just like on some jokey stuff and like we're joking and things get too far, it's like, okay, that's on me. Like that's fair. You know what I mean? Like fair. You know, we, we said some things fair, but unfairly, like you out of you start yelling at me for no reason. Like my voice isn't raised either. Uh, no, cut it out. Absolutely not. I will not, I will not be spoken to unfairly. Another one that goes for everybody, my money and time matters. You will not waste it without my consent. Don't, don't let anybody mess with your money ever. Also, another thing, I'm not gonna be questioned unnecessarily. I think people have this really um, weird thing where they like to question me a lot, and I don't like that. Like, I just simply don't like being questioned. We can have a conversation, we can get to know each other, but when I am just barraged with questions, I get very annoyed easily. Like, I don't like that. Like, what are, what are you trying to get at? Like, you know when people just try and like, like poke at you and like try and figure you out? And I'm like, no offense, like your social skills fucking suck. Like, but you're gonna get to know me. Like, I, uh, I don't like that. I, I like when people kind of unfold naturally. That's, 
what I like when I'm getting to know somebody and some people they are more like interviewers I guess but it doesn't work for me and I pretty much am gonna shut that down every time you're not gonna question me you're not gonna get to know me in a fucking day I don't think that's cute I don't think that's authentic I don't think that's real I don't think that's fun for me like no like let people unfold naturally it's so uncomfortable and strange to me like, we don't we don't have the emotional currency frankly I don't owe you jack shit. Stop questioning me. Like, eek. It gives me the ick. I decided who is in my space and the reasons. And personally, right now, my home is for rest and work. I spend a lot of time here. I film here. I work here. I sleep right over there. Like, I don't want to entertain my space. That is something that I don't like to do. I do. Like, if you want to come over here and we go and take pictures and have, like, a content day, my ho home is open to a content day. My home is not open for just entertainment and parties and, frankly, even just hanging out. I live in a beautiful city with so many new restaurants, hangout spots, coffee shops, all things. Like, I, I want to get out of my house because of how much time I spend in my house. And, no, I won't, I won't be entertaining here. Is there a time in my life where I will absolutely be opening my home for entertainment? Of course. But I've set a boundary right now, like, that is not what my home is for. And recently I had a family member who visited and they really wanted to, like, I thought the growing hour was about to fall. They really wanted to visit my home and I was just like, no. <laughs> no, like, I love you. I love you so much. But there's really no need for us to just entertain in my home. Like, I don't want to. I want to leave my house today because I haven't left in three days. So those are my non-negotiables. All of these things I just mentioned, I will never feel bad for there is a positive thing to the fuss. There are so many positives to being fussy. I do think that like being fussy has opened up new hobbies for me. So like those cute aesthetic drinks I make, I do it. I started it because I love drinks. I think they're so fun and cute and like my friend Morgan was like, you'd always make me stop to get freaking like little drinks before work. I'm like, because there's something about like, okay, I have my drink, I can start my day. I have my little drink. It's just something to look at on your desk, the pouring of the drink and seeing how it turns out. Like, it's just, it's meditative for me. So, but it's also like something that makes me treat myself and do a lovely thing for myself. I'm also not rushing my maintenance, like honestly, me a year ago would have split this into four pieces and like we would have already been done. Don't be late, but don't rush yourself. And also that's something I, I get, oh, I get, oh, I get so far up my boyfriend's earth. I get, oh, I get all up in his shit. When he rushes me, I go crazy. If we are not right, like if you're just rushing me to rush me, ooh, like the dragon is out. Like the dragon is, ooh, I get so ready to fight. I'm like, oh, okay. We're gonna do this today. We gonna do this today. Don't let people rush you, especially unnecessarily. Like if you're rushing me for no reason, like if we are not late, I, ooh, I'm like actually getting irritated just thinking about the idea of someone rushing me. I love the idea of fussy because it doesn't have to be this like non-transferable thing. You can transfer your fuss to other people in such a good, good way. Like I love to encourage people to like the small things people do. I'll be like, oh my God, like in this life, like how many people do anything for you? Like, let's be honest, like, how many people go out of their way to do a damn thing for you on a daily basis? Like, I make a fuss. When someone does something nice for me, I'm like, oh my god. Like, it is, like, a big deal. It's a big deal. And, like, it encourages them to be like, oh, wow, okay. She really appreciates me. I'm not taking for granted. Like, that is probably half the reason people don't do nice things for other people is because they are taken for granted. So make a fuss over that. Like, I think it, there is something so cute about that. It's so easy to be like, oh my God, you're so kind. Like, what a thoughtful thing to do. Like, where did you, where did you become so thoughtful? Like, and it doesn't have to be disingenuous. It just has to be like, hey, like, you're treating me well. And I'm not gonna like, let this go so easily. Like, no, 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 no. Let's sit here in this moment of you treating me well. That's so impeccable of you. Like, what a, like, what a good friend you are. Like, Throw some sauce on it, you know what I mean? Like, and not even throw some sauce on it, but just like revel in the fact that like someone did something nice for you. I love that. I think it's a good idea to make a big deal of other people's accomplishments and moments. Like if someone has an accomplishment, fuss over it. Like don't just be like, oh, that's cool. It's so lame. And make a big deal of your own. Like make a big deal of it. Even though it doesn't mean you're publicly making a huge deal of it. Cause that's like, that's not me very much either. But like other people, yes. Like I will shout it from the rooftops. Like. My bitch over here, 
just got one new follower. <laughs> like, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Just make a big deal. Especially if someone opens up to you about their accomplishments, because especially nowadays, like, you know, what? We're moving in silence. Lame. No. No. We're moving loudly. I want to make a big deal out of you. Yes. I also like gushing over my man. I don't know. He's just a little too humble sometimes. And I'm just like, no, like, you're so hot. You're so handsome. Like, you're everything, baby. Like, ugh. So I like to do that. Like, I love to absolutely fuss over him. I love to have, like, new nicknames for him and stuff. Like, and it's so funny. Some of my girlfriends will even be like, Yvonne, does he actually like that stuff? Like, or are you just like, I am an annoying girlfriend. I know that. I, and like, in our private time, he loves it too. Like, he'll be like, wait, yeah. Like, he'll be like referencing my weird little nicknames that I have for him. Like my newest one is like I was in traffic the other day and I was like, oh my god, my little pun. So yeah, like I don't know, I don't care. It's like I just I'm going to love you out loud. You know what I mean? It's like why hide it? Like, make sure the other people around you like fix their clothes, give them gum, like like let them know that them feeling confident is also a priority for you. Like a, for an example. I went to my dad's like alpha anniversary thing and there's like, I was taking pictures of him with his friends. I was like, yeah, go dad. There's just this one photo and I knew when I took it, I was like, dang, I was like, something looks off. And I was like, oh, it's his jacket. But I didn't want to like make everybody get back together and like fix my dad's jacket. But I, but then the next day when he was looking at the photos, he noticed it and he's not a very vain man. So I was like, I was like, I freaking knew it. Like, and I, it's just one of those things that's always gonna bother me. <laughs> like I'm gonna look back and it's always gonna bother me that I'm like, no, I should have, I should have fixed your jacket like I should have fixed you up like and 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 I'm not gonna do that again like I'm really not like I'm just gonna keep make it a priority to make other people like fuss over that make sure that they look good in their photos make sure that they feel good you good you okay are you sure you, you, you're acting a little nervous because you look great you're gonna do great you know what I mean like, it's not it's not hard next I think it's also finding a way to share your disappointment. I'm not the best at this. this is something I'm gonna absolutely have to work on. So I was thinking of ways where I can share my disappointment in the classiest way possible because I know that, especially if I stew on something, I can come off like bitchy and I don't like that. I don't, because it really distracts from the point. Like you don't ever wanna be all rude for no reason. Um, and that's where I think fussy gets a bad rap. It's like, you're particular, but it's like, okay, so. Like I, it, I, like I don't wanna make it a problem, but I do wanna like get what I want. Choose your battles. If it's not a big deal, if you're gonna get over it, then just like get over it. But I feel like if you've spent money or you've spent time or effort, bring it up. You can express displeasure with an experience, especially if it isn't how it was described, particularly in writing. If a service or something is written down and it is just not how it's described, like, hey, this wasn't what I thought it was gonna be, this didn't really match the verbiage that I saw online. If you got a, an idea of something from somewhere and the things are not matching, bring it up. And that you don't have to be rude or petty, but you do need to make sure that you're understood. The number one way of doing this is just watch your tone. I think it's so uncomfortable when someone, that it's, especially if you've been performing a service for them, like I appreciated like when I was serving and things like that, it's like, okay, the same way you order should also be the same way you critique. Putting on like a pretentious voice isn't going to get your point across. Like, I'm gonna talk like, hey, honestly, like, I'm a little disappointed in this. I'm like, hey, honestly, like, you know, like, it's just, it comes off so disingenuous. So, really, really, really watch your tone. And if you're angry, take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Look off into the distance. Literally, um, neuropsychologists tell you, like, if you're angry, look off into the distance, like dial it your pupils because it takes you out of emotion quickly. So that's a really good tip is like look off in the distance, take three deep breaths, fix your tone. If you can go to <clears throat> check one, two, three, <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me. <sighs> okay. I like your establishment. I want you to succeed. I can see the effort you put in. You know, Start things off on a good note that kind of lead them to know that criticism is coming or a complaint is coming or something is coming. Expressing that like, I like you, I like your establishment, I want to support you, I want you to succeed. Um, I can see that you put in effort, if that is the case, will go a long way. Or even just, just being straight up as like, hey, I just, I don't want this to come off harsh at all, but like I, I had the worst time here. Bring it down to a very real level. You don't have to like bring yourself to some weird like fake, Ugh. You know what I'm talking about, that icky Karen shit. Don't do that. Don't do that. 
be, you know, like level with people, but also be direct with how you actually feel. Um, and have opinions without malice. You can express your opinions without it coming off like, I am belittling you or your taste, or like, well, that's not how I would do it. You know, it's like, ah, mm, avoid that at all costs. It really just comes off very, like, why do you need that? Why do you need that? Why do you need to, like, you know what I mean? Like, why do you need to belittle somebody to get your opinion across? Like, or sometimes also, something I'm working on is like, okay, I don't have to counter your opinion. If I don't agree with your opinion, I could just leave it where it's at. I don't have to counter. I don't have anything to say. Cool. If that's how you, if that's your opinion, cool. I'm also not going to go along with it, but I, you can be extremely neutral and just be done with it. So my expected outcomes from this era, entering this era, applying all of the things I just talked about, I expect to be getting what I want. I expect to get it expeditiously. <laughs> like, I'm gonna increase my self-respect. I also think it's gonna help get comfortable with your own authority as a person, knowing that you have agency over the way that you are treated and just agency in general in your life. And just being comfortable with that. You have authority. You do. You have authority. So use it. I also think other people will respect the approach. Like, she's not a saddleware. I'm not going to bring her dumb shit. Don't bring me dumb shit. Because she's not going to take it. Like, that's not her. And that that's what I want. I want to send the message of, like, no. No, it's not good enough. <laughs> really. I, like, no, I want, I want everyone to think twice. I'm going to have feedback. And that's okay. That's okay. She's particular, and that is A-OK. -okay. I think that is the vibe we all need to be giving off. It's like, just, hey. Because everything isn't for us, and it's so... This is a lot more to do with alignment than anything else. I don't want the scraps. I don't want the leftovers. I want what's meant for me. I want the things that resonate with me, the things that make me vibrate, the things that just feel like they were meant for me, God-given. That is what I want. And honestly, a lot of that comes with a deeper understanding of your taste. I think knowing yourself, knowing what makes your heart sing, knowing the things that you're attracted to, why you're attracted to them is just such a big deal. And the more you get into it, the more it grows. And that's what I want. I want to just be aligned with the things that are meant for me. And I know the things that are meant for me are very specific. They're very, very specific because I'm not, we're all, individuals. We all want different things. And the more you only accept the things that you care about, the things that excite you, the things that you're interested in, the more those things will come along. So that's, that's a big deal to me. And I think that really will, this fussy era will align me more with the path that I'm supposed to be on and the people that are supposed to be there. And last but not least, better treatment all around. I want to be treated like a queen. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm, I'm over it. I'm dusting my hands of it. Like, I want to be treated exceptionally well. And I want to treat others exceptionally well. And I don't want any resistance towards that. I don't want any reason to not treat somebody exceptionally well. You know, you know when it's like, oh, this person doesn't treat me well in the past. Like, oh, and you just like, you stop giving and you stop giving. I don't want that anymore. I don't want that resistance. I want to, I want to be so fully giving and I want everything to be so reciprocal in this like cycle of just I want us to be out doing each other with how good we treat each other type thing like that's that's where I'm at because it's it's and and even from a service based side it's like I I really do want I want an exceptional service but I also want to be an exceptional customer I, I, I'm so loyal to the people that, the people, the businesses, the brands, whatever. I'm so, so loyal that it's like, if you impress me, I will be here forever. Like, I really, really will. And I'm just excited to really practice it and give it a shot. Not really give it a shot. I'm really just going to low-key change my entire approach to life starting today. <laughs> and, yeah. And it starts with this hair because, honestly, I was not expecting it to turn out. Like, I knew it was going to look cute. I look the fuck good. I don't just look good. I'm sorry. Let me look. This is sponsorship. Let me talk first. <laughs> but baby, I look expensive. I look expensive. I look fussy. I look like, I look 
like a million bucks. My hair looks insane. I have not spent this much time on my hair in so long. I'm actually embarrassed to say. Okay. I've been growing my hair for like an hour. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope there was something you can take from entering your fussy era. I hope y'all enter your fussy era with me. Let's get particular. Let's get real granular with the things that we like and go full force into our interests and the things that just excite us. Um, and we're not taking any shit, okay? We're just not. We're not settlers anymore. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like it, don't forget to leave it a like. If you like me, don't forget to subscribe. If you want to see more of me, you can always check me out on my Instagram, Ivana Brooke. There will be a code down below for new me. Thank you again for sponsoring today's video. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.